today, Jane and I are going to talk about Google Maps. Google Maps is an app available on iPhones and Android devices. If you drive, you may be familiar with using a Maps app to get driving directions. But did you know that Google Maps is even more useful when you don't have to drive? They help you find directions when you walk or take public transit, and they can help you explore neighborhoods new and old. Today, we will show you how to be a super pedestrian and a power user for all transportation modes. Here are the ways we are going to use Google Maps today. We will use the app to get walking directions to meet up, visit a place we don't know well. We will also use the app to find the best way to travel there. Finally, we'll use the app to discover other places and events taking place nearby. First, we'd like to introduce you to someone who uses Google Maps all the time and has some expert points of view to share with us. David Trevette is chair of the Brookline Pedestrian Advisory Committee. It's a transportation group that advocates for making walking trips better, safer, and always age-friendly. Hi, I'm David Trevette. I'm the chair of the Pedestrian Advisory Committee here in Brookline and I really love using the map apps on my phone. Now I happen to have an iPhone from Apple and I use Apple Maps but I also have Google Maps here and today we're going to be showing you examples with Google Maps on an Android phone. They all work pretty much the same. I use the maps in a number of different ways. So for example I know my immediate neighborhood here in Brookline but there's lots of Brookline I really don't know and haven't been to. So somebody will mention a street name and I don't know where that is. So I bring up the maps, I put in the name of that street and the map shows me where it is. And then by expanding the map, I can look at the surrounding area and see what's around that. If I happen to want to go there, well, I can get directions. So I can, there's a little button you press, it brings up direction options and you can say, do I want to get there by walking or by public transit? And it'll tell you also how long it's going to take, how far away is it. And that helps me decide how to go. So it's really amazing how well this works. Once you get used to it, it's an amazing resource. David, that is absolutely awesome. Google Maps have so many features and options. It's opened up a world of possibilities for those of us who are on foot and want to try a new route for getting to a familiar destination or for finding places in an unfamiliar location. And uh, speaking of being on foot, did I mention to you I brought my four-footed friend with me today? Yes, I see him. Yeah, this is Wendell. He's an elderly wire fox terrier, and he looks just like Asta the wire fox in those old black and white movies. So is, if it's okay with you, could we find a dog park today? Maybe on the Google Maps yeah, to take yeah. Wendell to? Yeah, oh, we can bring up Google Maps. Oh, thank that. you so much. That's great. Okay, now I'm going to bring up Google Maps. So I click on the map icon here, and that brings up Google Maps. Well, the first thing a map needs to know is where are we? We have to have a starting point. And if you look at this little white circle down here, you see it's, there's a red in the center. That says it doesn't know where we are. So I'm now going to press that button and it brings up some options. It says, do it allow maps to access this device's location? And so I'm going to click while using the app. Now it knows where we are and it has told us here's our location. So now we can actually enter dog parks and you see it comes up with a little keypad that we can type into. So we put dog space P-A-R-K, and we put in dog park, and it brings up a whole bunch of little markers. Now I'm going to use two fingers and expand that around where we are, and you see here's Coolidge Park and Griggs Park, too, fairly, and this little white, little blue button here tells us where we are. So there are two dog parks pretty close to us. Which one do you think we should choose? Well, these two look about the same distance. What about this one? That's really useful, David. When I go with Wendell, I like to pick the green routes with fewer busy streets. So you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to set up my phone to go to the Coolidge Park dog park. And then when we get there, meet Maria. Hey, 
How are you? Good. 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 Hey, Maria, you got here ahead of us. David and I took a leisurely stroll because we wanted to test out some features on the Google map. But have you thought about where we're going to travel to today? Yeah, before you got here, I took a look at Google Maps. Um, I was able to put in sort of museums near me in the search bar, and um, it came up with a few different options. Okay. So we could go to the Lars Anderson Auto Museum. Mm -hmm. the, there's something called the Long Year Museum. But the one that I thought looked really interesting was the Waterworks Museum. That's interesting. Do you know a little bit more about it? So it's a museum about water systems engineering. It's actually in an old pump house in Chesna Hill. Hey, I'd really like to go there because my son is a mechanical engineer, but let's take out the Google map and look at the hours and how to get there. Sounds good, I'll take a look. Okay. To get directions and times for different transportation modes, tap on the app to open it up. It shows our location with the blue circle. At the top of the screen, tap search here and type in the location of where you want to go. Today, we're going to the Metropolitan Waterworks Museum. At the top of the screen, once we've hit directions, it will show you the different transportation modes that you can take to get to your destination. It takes about nine minutes in a car, about 30 minutes on the train, about 40 minutes walking, and again, about nine minutes to use a ride hail service like Uber or Lyft. Walking or biking is certainly an option today because it's so nice outside. It will only take me 40 minutes. The app is going to show two different walking route options. And it'll show me that it's going to take about 40 minutes to get there on mostly flat terrain. Swipe up to get a preview of the directions. If you tap start in these directions, Google Maps will give you voice prompts and your phone will vibrate when you need to turn right or left as you are walking. Remember to look at the sidewalk and not at your phone. If you have a newer phone and the camera is enabled, Google Maps is also now using a camera assist to help you see the actual buildings on the street as you walk. I need to take Wendell home, so how about this? I'll take the train there and you'll get there ahead of me. I'll meet you. Sounds good. See you there. Hey, we got here. Yeah. All good. So let's recap how we got here today. Sounds good. Maria used the travel mode feature at the top of the app to select the walking option. I used the same feature to get directions to choose the train. I've never been here before and it helped me know which train to catch and how long the trip would take. Google Maps makes it really easy to get around using any travel mode. Anyway, let's go in, okay. and after we tour the waterworks, let's leave a little time to grab a bite to eat. Let's go for it. Hey, that was absolutely amazing. I had no idea there were so many reservoirs here in Massachusetts and how they got built. And of course they built them before they had Google Maps for location. I know, it was so interesting. I'm so glad we went. Yeah. Um, let's look for a place to grab a bite to eat and get a cool drink. Okay, let's go. We can use Google Maps to show us restaurants, cafes, and other places in the community close by. Everyone should know that listings that come up first in the search are paid for by the merchants, but every business is eligible to sign up for free and get on the map. Right now, I'm going to pinch the map to zoom in or out to explore what is nearby. But there is also this useful toolbar with options like restaurants, coffee, gas, and groceries. I could also type in the search bar, 
restaurants near me. I wish I had more time to explore that neighborhood. I want to go back to the waterworks, and I also want to check out some of the cool restaurants we saw on the map and find a dog park up there. Oh gosh, that reminds me, I need to go home and get Wendell. Well, it's been a lot of fun today, Maria, and thanks to Google Maps, we got curious, but we never got lost. Yes, we hope you will get out and explore now that you have seen how useful the app can be. Here are our takeaways today for Google Maps. Use Google Maps to select all types of transportation trips, on foot, on a bike, or on public transit. It's not just for directions in your car. You can use the maps to explore your neighborhood, new destinations, restaurants, and businesses, or discover a brand new neighborhood. It's particularly useful for step-by-step -step walking directions. While we don't recommend keeping your phone out while you're walking, the voice and vibration feature allow you to know when new directions are being given, even while your phone is in your pocket. Remember, you can always use the X to return to the home screen, and if you get lost in the map, tap the arrow on the screen to return to your location. Finally, the blue circle is your location on the map. If you're walking, the blue cone shows you the direction in which you're headed. You can download a map ahead of time if you know that you're going to be traveling to an area without cellular service. For any of these apps, contact your local Council on Aging if you need help navigating how to use them. You can also watch sections of this video again and practice at home or in your local neighborhood. It's free and you'll get more proficient if you try it out a few times.